Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about finding Nash equilibria via the best response method. So I've got a couple other videos that are kind of similar. Um, finding Nash equilibria matrix games is, is good. And the method I'm going over is implicitly the same one. But here I'm going to be really deliberate about spelling out best response, best response method. So consider the following game. So I've got two players. Player one is controlling rows up and down. Player two is controlling columns left and right. Player one is choosing rows up or down. Player two chooses columns left or right. And notice the colors, right? Okay. If player two chooses left, player one's best response, what's this going to be? So I'm saying, okay, suppose player two has chosen left. What's player one's best response? Well, player one, we get a payoff of one by choosing up or a payoff of four by by choosing down, right? The first number is the payoff to player one color coded. The second number is the payoff to player two. So if player two uses left, player one can either get four or one. Well, they want to get four, so they're going to choose down. So if player two chooses left, player one's best response is down because four is bigger than one. What if player two chooses right, right? So suppose player two has chosen right. What's player one's best response? What's well, down because three is bigger than two, right? So if player two chooses right, then player one's best response is down because three is bigger than two. Now let's look at this from the perspective of the other player. Suppose player one chooses up, what's player two's best response? Well, if we're up here, player two gets six by choosing right or five by choosing left. Player two's best response to player one's choice of up is right. So I say play, if player one chooses up, player two's best response is right because six is bigger than five. What if player one chooses down? Well, if player one chooses down, player two's best response is still right because eight is bigger than seven, right? So if player one chooses down, player two's best response to down is right because eight is bigger than seven. Matter of fact, one thing we could do is we could go back and we could underline the numbers corresponding to best responses and that's the underline method. So I've done this here. So let me try to move this. This is kind of not doing what I wanted it to do. Now it's better. So consider the following game. Here I've now underlined best responses. Here I've underlined each payoff a player uses. Or here I've underlined each payoff a player uses when they play their best response. I should say receives. Here I've underlined the payoff each receives when they use their best response. Against left, player two's best response was down because four is bigger than one. Against right, down because three is bigger than two. Against up, player two's best response was right because six is bigger than five. And against down, player two's best response is eight because it's right <laughs> because eight's bigger than seven. Okay, so two lines in a single row or column indicate the strategy is always best, meaning the presence of a dominant strategy. So here we have two, pay two underlines in a single column or single row. Sorry, my contacts are just making everything kind of bad. So we have two underlines in the same row. So we know this is a do down is a dominant strategy for player one. It's also always the best response. Right is, al is always the best response. Two underlines in this column for player two. And so player two has a dominant strategy as well. Both have dominant strategies. Also, two underlines in the same cell mean a Nash equilibrium. So the Nash equilibrium of this game is down right. Okay. So... Here's the game. I lost my E there. Boy. Okay. What I want to develop next, I'll go back up to that in a second, is that though they both have a dominant strategy, and though the dominant strategy, uh, of course, picks out a Nash equilibrium, this is actually not a prisoner's dilemma game. You might have thought this is a prisoner's dilemma game. It's not a prisoner's dilemma game. Why not? Well, the prisoner's dilemma requires each has a dominant strategy. Good. Got that. But it also requires that the joint payoff is higher if they both use their non-dominant strategy. That doesn't happen here. So here we'll look at joint payoffs. That's what these numbers are doing. I'm going to add up 1 and 5. That's 6. Add up 2 and 6. That's 8. Add up 4 and 7. That's 11. Add up 3 and 8. That's 11. OK. Well, this was the Nash equilibrium. The joint payoffs were 11. When they use their non-dominant strategy, the joint payoffs are 6. This is, not a, this is not a prisoner's dilemma. Now, if these numbers were different, so I could change these numbers so that it would still preserve the dominant strategy. Suppose I added, 
Suppose I added uh, six to each of these. So this one plus six, this becomes uh, seven, and this becomes 10, right? For instance, like add, add six to number one, add six to four, then this would be seven, this would be 10, right? Then we'd have a prisoner's dilemma. Why? Because seven plus five would then be 12, which would be bigger than, uh, bigger than 11. Actually, well, so here I spoke too soon. I would have made that too large because this would this would then be 17. No, nope, it would still not be a prisoner's dilemma. We'd have to reduce this. We'd have to reduce one of these payoffs here, because we'd really want it to be the case that the social that the that the, uh, the joint payoff maximizing uh, outcome happens when they use their non-dominant strategy. That's what's special about the prisoner's dilemma, is that when people use their non-dominant strategy and somebody else uses their dominant strategy. Whoever has, uh, who has whoever's defected, so to speak, ends up with a uh, much higher payoff. Although joint payoff still smaller than uh, social, than the social surplus maximizing outcome when they both use their non-dominant strategy. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I've got a I've got other videos that talk about solving matrix games and prisoners dilemma examples. So I'm pretty tired. I'm just gonna be quiet now. <laughs>